Right, hello everyone. Um, uh, very interesting uh, talks we've had so far, and hopefully um, I can add to the views you've heard and, and maybe uh, introduce some, some new ideas. Um, I want to talk globally uh, about the outlook uh, for the real estate markets. And you, know, you, you, you have to start really with obviously the, the impact of the COVID pandemic, um, which means it, it's, it's very important uh, we begin with you know, how we see sort of the near-term outlook. What is the near-term story? So I'm going to talk about global markets. I'll, I will break some of this down to regional specific stories, but in, in essence, the, the, the same themes apply everywhere. Um, and I won't go on about the outlook for logistics. I think everyone's heard about logistics for, for so much, but obviously I do cover a little bit about the outlook for that sector. So let me just jump to the near-term story. And what you have in front of you is, is really the sort of global demand for real estate, occupied demand for real estate, the real estate absorption. That's that dark blue line. And against that, you have the leading indicator. This is made up of hiring intentions, consumer sentiment, business confidence, and so on. So unsurprisingly, you know, the impact of, of COVID pandemic and, and policy around that, the restrictions, and then relaxation of restrictions, you, you have this very, very sharp sort of bounce back um, in, in, in sort of the expectation of demand for real estate. And, and, and that, that absorption we're already seeing in the data in 2020, we're seeing that, that pick up in, in occupier demand across the markets. Now, this is the occupier recovery, if you like, in, in, in the context of a post-pandemic world. Um, but it's also against this low new supply. Now, it's easy to get carried away with, with the current supply challenges. We, we know construction costs, we know material prices, shortage of workers. But, but when you look at this globally, uh, and when you look at all property supply, certainly in, in the institutional space, and you go back 30, 40 years, there's, there's a pattern when the new supply has been trending down over time. I'll, I'll come back to that later. But it, it is a, it's, 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 it's an environment that, you know, there are some exceptions. We've seen logistics, for instance, a lot of new supply coming in that space, although demand is meeting it. But ultimately, it's a relatively low supply world. So, so when, you, when you put these two together, um, then unsurprisingly, you look at rental growth now. This is headline prime rental growth. Um, you, you see that black line, the dash is there. That's, that's again, that leading indicator. You, you're talking about a, a, a big recovery in the rental growth story. So you have got investors looking at improving rental growth numbers. You're seeing it in the retail sector as well. It's stabilized place like Asia. It's a very good leading indicator, though obviously it's had some recent setbacks. But nonetheless, you're seeing a rental growth expectations coming through in the data. So this bodes well for a returns outlook, not necessarily 2021, 2022, but it will be one in which investors get ahead of this. As they